I thought I would bring you a quick update on the GMK Tech Nuckbox G5, this little guy right here. Apparently there was a BIOS update for this guy, and that was brought to my attention thanks to the user Dual Papayas here, and indicated that the GPU now actually hits 1200 megahertz instead of 1000 megahertz. So if you go over to the gmktech.com website, go over to more links, go to support, and for more update, and drive down to the find the BIOS for the model here, and sure enough, under GMK GK5, you can see here it was updated on June 6th, June 7th of 2024. So if you go over to the RAR file and then just download it, right? Now, once I downloaded the file, I did check it at virustotal.com and it came back completely clean. So no concerns there. Now, since it is a RAR file, uh, I don't think Windows will natively be able to extract this. So you're going to have to download something like 7-Zip, which is a free open source program, easy to use. And uh, you can just right click or open up 7-Zip and just tell it to extract it wherever and have it extract it here. And there's the folder. Go ahead and open it up. And you have these files here. Now, if we continue to follow the instructions that they gave us, you just have to pop your USB drive into your computer and then format it. So you can see here I've got my D drive, which is my USB drive. And just go ahead and right click format. And then in this case, you want to make sure it's FAT32. 16 kilobyte in size, and then they say to name it WinPE, probably doesn't matter, but I will do that anyways. Set to quick format and start. Click OK. Okay, once it's been formatted, you can go ahead and take those files that are in that folder that you extracted. All you have to do is highlight them and click them, drag them over to your USB drive, WinPE drive. And there they all are. Now you should safely disconnect your USB flash drive. And now all you have to do is pop that into your mini PC and then go ahead and power it on. Now once you power it on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you match the F7 button here so you bring up the boot menu. Okay, now you can see here you've got either your boot manager, which will take you to Windows, or this UEFI PMAP partition one, which will be your USB flash drive. Go ahead and choose that and it should automatically start updating the BIOS. And when it completes updating, it will just shut down. And then all you have to do is remove the USB flash drive and then power it back on. And when you power it on, it may take a while to boot up because it uh, effectively reset the entire BIOS. And so it may have to re-detect all the hardware, especially your RAM, it might have to go through a cycle of testing and then it should boot into Windows. So it may take another couple of minutes. And then if it boots into Windows, you may want to reboot and go back to the BIOS. The first thing I would do is load optimized defaults. And in this case, it shows us F3 is optimized defaults. Hit F3, optimized defaults loaded. And taking a quick look here, the previous BIOS version was uh, G5 version 101, which this one is also indicating as G5 version 101. But uh, the build date previously was March 19th, 2024, whereas this one's May 22nd, 2024. So it's definitely been updated. Now, previously, when I went over to the Advanced tab and then went to Power and Performance and GT for the graphics, you went down to Maximum GT Frequency and Default Max Frequency, it would max out at 1000 megahertz. And even though it did have the 1200 megahertz there previously, even if you selected that manually, it would still only max out at 1000 megahertz. Now, if you just leave it at Default Max Frequency, it will hit that 1200 megahertz uh, maximum speed. Now, additionally, I went into power limit select in the previous BIOS and you could choose between 8 watt, 12 watt, 15 watt. 8 watt reduces the performance as expected, it's less power. And then 12 watt is the typical performance uh, TDP. And then if you bumped it up to 15 watt, there really was no performance difference there. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out the 15 watt as well because it seems like that has been unlocked here. And lastly, while this isn't really new for the uh, this BIOS, I didn't really mess with the hardware monitor much because the CPU did, did tend to run pretty hot when it was being benchmarked. You can go to advanced hardware monitor smart fan function and then the default automatic mode here, you can set the limits to turning the fan off at this temperature, starting it up at this limit and then running at full speed at that temperature in Celsius. Now you can also go here and for my testing, I did test it setting it this uh, manual PWM setting to 255, which is equivalent to 100% and zero is obviously 0%. And that's why I could get the uh, I guess, optimal or maximum cooling performance of this device with the fans running at full speed. So with the BIOS updated, the first thing I did was fire up a couple games to see if the GPU clocks would run at 1200 megahertz. And sure enough, they did. 
So next step was to see if this resulted in any actual improvement. Now, if you're curious about the fan speed at full tilt versus at idle, or I guess with the uh, default fan profile, I did do a couple of quick videos here that I'll show you the difference between them. The fan noise really isn't that uh, bad when it's at full tilt, it's just that it is, it is noticeable. So it's not something you're going to want to have running at 100% all the time anyways. Now, while I did test this in several different configurations, one thing that I did do consistently in these benchmarks is turn off Windows Defender. Now, I know that puts your uh, device at risk if you do that, but I will show you in uh, some of these games that the uh, Windows Defender really had an impact on the gaming performance, mainly on stutters. And I'll show you with Forza Horizon 4 here, where um, with Windows Defender enabled, you get a lot of stutters. And as soon as I disabled it, restarted the game, restarted the benchmark, those stutters all went away re-enabled Defender and they came back. So it's kind of uh, not entirely scientific, but it's at least enough evidence to me that it, it made a significant difference by turning off Windows Defender. Now this stutter wasn't present in every game or every benchmark. It was most prominent in Forza, although it did uh, tend to rear its head in most of the benchmarks with Windows Defender on, although not to the extent that you see it here in Forza. And well, you probably already know how to do this in case you're wondering how to turn off Windows Defender, you can just go to your start menu, right click, go to uh, system or settings and go down to privacy and security and choose Windows security, go down to virus and threat protection. And then you can go down to manage settings under virus and threat protection settings, then you can disable them all here. Now just keep in mind that if you turn off real time protection here, it will turn it off for your current Windows session, and if you reboot, this real-time protection will come back on, but all these other options here will be disabled uh, on the next reboot. And I didn't spend any time like kind of going, okay, if I enable this, don't enable this, it won't affect it. I didn't spend that kind of time. I just know when I turned all the stuff off, the, the stutters went away. While running some of the benchmarks, especially with the 15-watt TDP profile, I noticed that for some games, the peak power draw from the wall was over 30 watts. Now the stock wall warp power adapter is 12 volts to 3 amps, if you can see that there. So that's 36 watts total. Now considering these power supplies aren't the most efficient near the top of the power curve, I thought I'd throw a more powerful power supply into the mix to see if this would help with FPS performance in general. So I found this inline uh, 100 watt power supply, now it's called 100 watt, and it is a USB-C connection comes with a USB-C connection, just like the other guy. And it is, says it's 100 watt, but it's only if you're pulling 20 volts. And this is a 12 volt device, so it's still five amps, so a maximum of 60 watts. But still, that's nearly double what the default power brick provides. So first up, let's take a look at the gaming performance benchmarks. And what you have here are the four different configurations that I ran. The blue represents the original BIOS with the stock fan profile the 36 watt power supply, and then of course the GPU running at 1000 megahertz, which is what, what it was limited to in that BIOS, and the CPU at the 12 watt TDP, the, the default. Then the other options here are with the new BIOS, and we've got the stock fan profile versus the 100% fan profile, and we've got the stock power supply versus the uh, 100 watt power supply, and then we've got the GPU of course on the new BIOS at 1200 megahertz because that, that's its max, then also running the CPU at the stock 12 watt and then also at 15 watt TDP. So what we can draw from this is that uh, regardless of what the uh, power supply was used, regardless whether the fan was at 100% or the stock profile, and whether or not the TDP was at 12 watt or 15 watt, their performance was almost identical. Now there was a significant improvement, at least in most of these benchmarks, over the stock profile uh, BIOS. So now your numbers up here represent the average FPS for that benchmark one, and then the number and the dark region represent the 1% low FPS for that benchmark. Now, if we want to look at the performance improvement over from the new BIOS over the old BIOS, and uh, like 1,000 to 1,200 should be roughly around 20% improvement, right? And uh, we end up getting, I guess, on average, we might get around that, but you can see that Batman Arkham Knight had a 
whopping 33% improvement. Uh, Hitman, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition all had about 15 to 20% improvement. And then you had Forza Horizon 4 and GTA 5 that only had a marginal improvement. So now during these benchmarks, if you take a look at the power draw from the wall, uh, can kind of find out too whether or not the 100 watt power supply really made any impact here too. And you can see across the board, it really didn't matter because if you look at the original BIOS and then the updated BIOS, both the green and the orange, which this one's a 36 watt, the green's the 36 watt power supply, the orange is a 100 watt power supply. There really was no difference in power draw there by any significant amount. But you do notice that when we run with a 15 watt TDP on the CPU that the power draw was significantly higher. Now if we go back to the benchmark results, you can see here that the FPS really didn't improve much, right? So there's really no benefit to running it at the higher TDP. And then here's the gaming power draw from the wall, whereas previously I showed you the average, which are these values right here. These here represent the maximum power draw from the wall during the benchmark. Now here's a breakdown of a few games, looking at the actual FPS as the game's being tested. And you can notice a few things here. One, the blue is the original BIOS FPS. And then the orange is the new BIOS FPS at the 1200 megahertz versus the 1000 megahertz GPU. And then the purple represents the, the new BIOS at the 15 watt TDP CPU. So this one's kind of a mess, but you can see that the uh, blue, sorry, the orange and the purple tended to trend higher than the blue, but you also have these lag spikes right here. So while I did have Defender disabled, as I noted before, there, there were still occasional lag spikes here, which you would notice in the game too. Now here's Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Clearly there's a uh, offset here between the blue, the original BIOS, and the new BIOS, whether at 12 watt or 15 watt TDP. And then you've got GTA 5 here, which is really kind of a mess. And we saw that the uh, FPS really didn't change a whole lot. Slightly improved with the uh, new BIOS, but not by a whole lot. And you can kind of see here they all kind of trend along the same path here. Now let's take a quick look at the breakdown of the CPU performance in each of these benchmarks, or at least a few of them. And what we have here are the comparison of the 12 watt TDP versus the 15 watt TDP to see if there's any improvement there or reason to have that activated. And what we have here over on the left is the orange, which is the core usage in percent, the CPU temp in green degrees Celsius, and the CPU power, which is the uh, wattage draw of the CPU in blue. And then over on the right, we have the scale for the core clocks in megahertz. And I forgot to put the closing parenthesis. Shame on me. So you can see that's all spelled out here. The solid line represents the um, 12 watt TDP. The dotted lines represent the 15 watt TDP. So one thing that stood out to me is if you look at this pink line or purple line, which is the core clocks in megahertz, with the 12 watt TDP, it is kind of bouncing around a little bit. That's not inherently a bad thing. It's probably just dynamically um, changing according to the load. But when we set it to the 15 watt TDP, it's just pegged at about 3000 megahertz or 2900 megahertz across the board. Now these were both running at fan speeds of 100%. And you can see too that the, uh, the CPU ran a little bit warmer with the 15 watt TDP uh, enabled versus the 12 watt. And then you can see the actual TDP down here in the blue. And since it's kind of a, a smaller number, I kind of zoomed in on that. And you can see that the difference in the TDP, while it didn't all, go all the way up to 15 watt TDP, it did hover around 14 watt with 15 watt TDP enabled. Then 12 watt just hovered around the 12 watt as it should. Now taking a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider, something similar here. Now you'll notice that uh, there really is no significant difference here between either the temperature or the core usage or even the core clocks. While the 12 watt did tend to bounce around a little bit more, it still kind of followed a, a similar trend there. Now the interesting thing is the actual TDP of the CPU or the power that I was drawing. You can see here that uh, the 15 watt TDP did increase at times, but then it bounced back down to around that uh, 12 watt TDP um, later in the benchmark. And lastly, GTA 5, something similar. Uh, you can see here that the 15 watt TDP did run, tend to run a little bit hotter. Then we also see the same trend with the uh, core clocks. The 12 watt is bouncing around a little bit and the 15 watt is solid across the board. And then as far as the uh, core usage, they're all pretty much similar and then max out at 100% later in the benchmark here. Then lastly, the TDP here. Again, you can see that the 15 watt TDP did raise the actual power consumption higher of the CPU itself but not all the way up to the 15 watts. So now if you want to do a quick comparison of the actual CPU temperatures, both at the default profile using 12 watt TDP and 15 watt TDP, 
can see here that the uh, at a fan 100% um, with a 12 watt TDP ran significantly cooler than the other guys here. So increasing the fan to 100% when at low, it actually seems to help. So it ran at around 70 Celsius on average compared to 82, 83 degrees Celsius uh, with the default profile running it, uh, fan profile and the 12 watt TDP. Same thing here for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can see here that 12 watt, 15 watt TDP, the CPU temperature tended to run about the same, but it definitely was about a good uh, 15 to 20 degrees Celsius cooler than the um, running it with the default fan profile. And lastly, GTA 5, similar trend. 12 watt TDP tended to run uh, cooler than the 15 watt TDP and definitely cooler than when you're using just the default fan profile, not running at 100%. Now, in my last video, I did test Cinebench both at 12 watt and 15 watt TDP, and that's where I realized that the uh, TDP really didn't have any effect on the performance. Everything was pretty much identical, set to 12 watt or 15 watt. And uh, although this time I took the 12 watt TDP results from a previous BIOS here, now you're going to see that the temperatures are higher because at that time I was running the stock fan profile, whereas in the dash line here with the 15 watt TDP, I was running it with the 100% um, fan profile, you can see that everything else was almost identical. The weird thing is, if you take a look here, the average of the 15 watt TDP was only 10.7 watts versus 12 watts for the uh, 12 watt TDP profile. So when it came to Cinebench, you look here, the TDP actually was lower, setting it to 15 watt TDP, so I'm not sure what's going on there. As far as the actual benchmark results, I don't think I have it here. No, but I'll throw it up on screen if I got it. Um, but the score at 15 watt TDP was actually slightly less than the score at 12 watt TDP. So while it did make a slight impact um, in gaming, it had almost no or actually a detrimental effect in running just a CPU centric benchmark like Cinebench. So what does this all mean? The bottom line is that the BIOS update actually improves gaming performance by allowing the integrated GPU to run at the spec to speed of 1200 MHz. This resulted in an overall improvement in gaming FPS, although not consistent from one game to the next. Batman Arkham Knight improved by about 33%, changing it from nearly unplayable at about 23 FPS average to playable at about 32 FPS average. Other titles like Forza Horizon 4 and GTA 5 only had marginal improvements of a few percent, while Hitman, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Sleeping Dogs had modest but noticeable improvements, ranging from 13 to 20%. Although Tomb Raider was still largely unplayable because FPS was still a little low, averaging around 26 to 28 FPS. Now changing the TDP of a CPU from stock 12 watt to 15 watt only resulted in a higher power draw and temperature with really no benefit in either CPU heavy or gaming benchmarks. It did offer more consistent clock speed, but that didn't translate into any kind of improvement that I could notice. Running the fans at maximum speed definitely improved cooling performance by 10 to 15 C at load with only a slight increase in fan noise although it's not necessarily something that I'd care to have running all the time at 100%. Thankfully, you can easily change the fan profile in the BIOS to only kick in at 100% when temps exceed, for example, 60 to 65 Celsius. Now, while this really isn't intended to be a gaming device, it's good to see GMK Tech offering BIOS updates to improve the product. So I hope you found this interesting and helpful, and until next time, talk to you later.